system is just so big. It has so many tributaries. You know, in a week of fishing, you can barely just scratch the surface around here. Man, it just blows away the cliche ideas of what California is. You go back in time on the Klamath River a little bit. I'd say it's the wild, wild west still. I couldn't see going anywhere else at this point. Uh, everything keeps me here. Everything keeps me here. I think the other thing that Klamath has going for it, I mean, it's, it's not urbanized for the most part. It cuts through like two or three different geographies. And on top of all that, it still has some intact Native American culture with stories and life histories attached to this river. Thankful for what, you know, we got. The river provides everything for us. We'll be at home out of wood and all of a sudden a flood will come and there's enough wood for the whole community and whole whole town pretty much, you know, and it's because the river brought it to us, you know, brings us everything. Yeah, this is this is my home, my my original home. My dad lives right up the way there. Family spot right up here, you know. I take people fishing from all over the world, all over. I try to show them, you know, how to fish and be better fishermen and get them dialed in, but I also want to let them know what what this area means and why we're still here. The Yurok people are still here, you know, it's because the old people battled for this spot, you know. We battled, you know. And we were never defeated here. If you be persistent and you stand up and you don't back down, things will come down. Dams definitely have a lifespan, and these four dams in the Klamath are reaching the end of their lifespan. They're coming down. You know, we'll essentially be the largest river restoration project in U.S. history. The restoration on the Klamath is really important because Again, when we do this type of work where we take out the dams and we restore the process on this river, we we're able to uh, not only benefit from it today, but we're also setting up the river system to have the function that it needs to have to sustain that into the future so that our kids and their kids will be able to return and see those same sort of values in this place. So, you know, if there's a river that we can restore and that we should restore, it's the Klamath. I'm excited about the dam removal. Um, there's some nerves surrounding my excitement, but it's gen a general excitement. Uh, I'm, I'm nervous because uh, Mother Nature's gonna play a role. I think if, uh, if we have a 10 year dry cycle right after it happens, it's gonna take a long recovery time and it's gonna affect my business as a fishing guide. But if we have a big winter like we did what, last winter, you know, winter before and the winter before that, uh, it'll yeah. be a quick uh, recovery and we'll be back to work in no time. So, man, I'm all for it, but I, sometimes I bite my nails just to know what's gonna happen because uh, as much as I think it's gonna be better, it is pretty good right now, you know? We, we love our fishery, it's pretty good. So. I feel like the idea and the theory is fantastic. I feel like if there's a place where an experiment like this should be done, it's the Klamath. I'm really excited to see what happens with the river, and I'm really even more excited to see what happens with the fishery, and I, I can't wait to figure it out. I mean, when those things come out, I'm gonna be fishing it. The Klamath historically was one of the largest salmon producers on the West Coast. Historically, we had all five runs of Pacific salmon in here, at least two runs of steelhead, and the clam is mostly known for its summer steelhead. The summer steelhead are, make up the majority of the steelhead in this system. Yeah, half pounders are this interesting phenomena that you get in a few of the rivers around here, and the Klamath, I think, has the best run of them. 
You know, they're definitely not your average resident trout. They're the smallest steelhead in the world. Yeah, they're steelhead. They have all the fight, just yeah. not the pounds. So when you get into them, you're not just into one for the day. You kind of pick on them for an hour or so. It's a blast. And they're feisty to the end. Even after you let them go, they drench you on the way out. It's just kind of fun. Well, you hear that saying that, you know, whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting. On the one hand, this water is what everybody is fighting about, and yet it's also this common thread, and the water really is the lifeblood of this basin, whether you're a farmer or whether you're harvesting fish in a traditional way in the lower river. The story of the Klamath is kind of the story of the native people, and it's, there's not very many places left in you know, America really, where people actually literally still rely on the river for a living. I think, you know, the ch this chance to re-engage Native American management of a landscape, to have them teach us about the ways that they burned and, and used the landscape to both benefit humans, but also sustain what was here in terms of biological diversity of life. I think that's a lesson we really need to relearn. If you help it a little bit, you know, and then leave it alone a little bit, It'll come back, you know. Everything heals in time. It is kind of a big experiment. This is the first time that four good-sized dams are coming out and gonna restore fish passage into 300 miles of historic habitat. Yeah, they're just bumping up against that dam like that, you know, for 60, 70, 80, 100 years. And then they could still remember. Yeah, it's amazing. So it'd be it'd be cool to see be cool to see like the first one go through, you know. I don't know what the word for first one is in in Europe. Maybe it's the number one, but I know the word for the last one, and it's called Kamakart. We could be saying the last one, but hopefully it'll be the first one going through, you know.